Okay. I'll be careful what I say then. Oh, nothing perfect. Nothing political, nothing religious, nothing dirty. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Ray Fuentes. I'm the Red Shoe Broker. And with me today is Robin Wood with uh, the Roof Doctors. Um, I've known Robin for quite some time and the Roof Doctors, maybe even longer. Um, and it's interesting how uh, buyers and sellers consider or maybe don't consider the importance of a roof on a house. Robin, um, before we get started, <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at my screen and you're there and you got some big fish. Uh, you can't even tell through this how big they are. That one on my, I don't know if you can see it. Pardon me. Yeah. Uh -huh. One there, that's 23 pound lake trout from Lake Tahoe. Wow. Yeah, that's a 35 pound king salmon from Kenai Peninsula in uh, Alaska. That's actually a small cutthroat that comes out of cutthroat trout coming out of Pyramid Lake. It's about seven pounds, and that's a brown trout, about seven pounds. Wow. So yeah. those are all real, and you caught them. Oh yeah. So how long have mouse. you been fishing? Not that long, maybe fifty years. Five zero. Yeah. Wow. I'm a lot. I'm a lot older than I look, Ray. Maybe you just started when you were younger. Yeah, yeah I was a baby. <laughs> now we did have a little bit of a conversation about you and fishing earlier too. Uh, now, am, am I mistaken? Are you a professional fisherman? No, I just, uh, I'm a seri serious fisherman. Okay. And I, um, I almost call it a career, but I've been doing it so long and I target trophy trout I have for 50 years. So I'm one of 34 people in the world with the IGFA, International Game Fish Association, Royal Grand Slam. I've caught uh, a rainbow wow. trout, brook, yeah, rainbow brookie, brown, golden trout, cutthroat trout, lake trout, and Old trout. So I'm on the record with 34 other lucky men or women. Wow, very interesting. Couple, two world records, one on a fly rod, one on a spinning rod. Other than that, I'm not that serious. <laughs> well, I'm glad I know you because if we run out of food, I know I can talk to you about getting fish. And I I'm would trade you toilet of, paper for them. I'm almost out of fish myself. <laughs> I'm out of fish. All I've got left are ducks and um, fe one pheasant. Okay. You hunt too? Yeah, I hunt. Yeah. How yes, long have you been I doing do. that? Not as long because, Ray, I started hunting with my son probably 10 to 15 years ago. We learned how to hunt together. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. I did some hunting in the past, but not a lot. Um, and when I came to California, I didn't do it at all. So I've it's done a little fishing. State. It's a tough state to hunt in. Yeah, know, yeah. So much private land. Let's go and get back on subject back on <laughs> and talk subject, about the yeah. roofs, right? Let's talk about roofs. Tell us a little bit about the roof doctors and yourself. How long have you been um, in roof inspections? I've been in the roof inspection business for 25 years plus. Okay. And I no longer get on the roof. I aged out, so to speak. Uh, roof doctors has been around for over 30 years. We have weathered five recessions because Adam has built this correctly, the owner, uh, his brother, who's now passed, uh, he's built it correctly, and he's basically built it to be recession-proof. We are, oh, yeah, we are. He built it very responsibly. Good, good. And so, um, I always, you know, we in here in the Sacramento region, uh, inspections are the responsibility typically of the buyer. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the inspections I recommend getting is a roof inspection. Um, but, you know, they, what people will ask me, what they'll say is, Ray, um, can't we just get a home inspection? Well, home inspectors are experts in what they do. That's their forte. We're experts on the roof and we get on the roof. Generally speaking, they don't get on the roof sometimes, but they never do an extensive uh, look at the roof like we do. We get on a tile roof, we lift up roofs and we, we lift up tiles and we look for everything. So uh, we're mitigating against the future as well as anything that the home inspector might find in the present. If he finds a spot in the ceiling in the living room, we chase it. And by the way, we are patterned after the real estate industry and we're modeled, we're modeled after this real estate industry. They are our primary customers. Oh, okay. 
But a homeowner, if they have a question or concern, they can contact you? Absolutely. We okay. probably 70, I, this I'm just spitballing here, Ray, but probably 70% of or more of our inspections and repairs are on the real estate side of things. However, we do a lot of homeowner uh, inspections and repairs, especially during the rainy season. Got it. Okay. So let's say I was a homeowner and, um, you know, we more or less just got out of the rainy season. It's in the summer. Um, if I was going to do work, I think I'd rather do it while it's dry. What would I look for uh, initially to see if there's any problems with the roof? Well, first of all, if you have any leaks or any stains on the inside, if on the eaves you see any stains or any dry rot, those are definite indications that there is or was at one point a leak. Okay, and should I be climbing up into the attic? Uh, you can do that, but it's sort of, it's, it's difficult because what you're going to be looking up at is you're going to be looking up at sheathing and that's harder to track than looking at a leak spot in the living room. Got it, got it. I'm going to, you know, you mentioned leak. I'm going to share a story with you on um, a roof that I had years and years and years ago. <clears throat> um, it was raining outside, but I didn't have any um, stains in my ceiling or anything like that. Nothing along right. those lines. And I walked into the front bedroom and I, you know, I turned on the switch um, to the light, you know, where the fan was. And something to my right moved. And I got a little panicky and I looked and it was like the whole wall was kind of moving. I'm like, what Oh my gosh, that? right. I, like, what was that? Well, you know how the ceiling fans, some of them have a, a bowl covering the light? Right. Water had leaked through the ceiling, down the wires, into that bowl. I had water probably an inch deep wow. in, in that bowl. And that's how I found out my roof was leaking. Um, it was the old shake roof. Right. You know, the, what is that, cedar? Yeah. It was that old roof. And, you know, it looked worn, but I didn't know, you know, it, it, it didn't look like it had holes in it or anything. It had yeah. holes in it. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I had to have my whole roof repaired. That was a long time ago, but yeah. uh, lesson learned. Right, exactly. Well, it looks for the uh, path of least resistance and it goes down there. For example, the wire in the, you know, the fan you were talking about. Right, right, right. But um, we still do some shake roofs, right? We started our business doing shakes. I started my career doing shakes and there's still some out there, you know. Yeah, um, I do see shake roofs every now and then. Um, I'm seeing more. Uh, um, composite. Right. And um, even recently I called you about a, a metal roof uh, yes. up in uh, Placerville. Yeah. Um, but, but speaking of um, the composite roofs, yes. I've, I've helped friends clean out their gutters. Yeah. And in the gutter, there's um, like sand. Granulation. Granulation. Um, how serious is that when I'm seeing that in the gutters? Probably not that serious. It's an indication of a couple things. It's normal because a, a composition shingle is a fiberglass mat covered with or saturated in asphalt with that granulation, that ceramic granulation on top. And oftentimes it's most extensive when the roof is first installed because that gets the first, you know, but mm -hmm. uh, as it ages, there's uh, granulation. The thing that you're going to want to look at primarily for granulation loss is if you get on the south side of the roof, mm -hmm. sun rises in the east and it's still setting in the west. And uh, when you start to see black, that's asphalt coming through. If you see oh. white, that's the fiberglass mat coming through. Okay. So the granules isn't a real big deal until I see black or white coming through the shade. I wouldn't concern yourself with that, but when you have an inspection, uh, make a note of it. When you call the girls, just say, you know, I saw granulation, and then the inspector will address that. But generally, it's not, no. Okay. Well, I, I think it was two years ago. Two years ago was the worst I'd ever seen it. I was selling a house, and there was moss on the roof. And I, you know, as an agent, I'm required to do an agent's visual inspection. So I noted right. that there's moss on the roof, and it looks like it's coming in between the um, composite right like it's growing right there on the edge um the, i represented the seller and i disclosed it but i don't know how big of a deal that was what do you uh, think you know, ray it's generally not that big of a deal sometimes with a shake roof yes it's always on the north side because the sun is rising on the other side 
generally speaking, it's cosmetic. And it can do more harm than good to take the moss off of there, unless it's really extensive. I mean, really extensive. Because then you start to rub off granulation, or if it's a tile roof, there's, you know, ex walking that's unnecessary up there. So as I said, there are a couple of things that a realtor and a homeowner or a buyer or a seller, usually the buyer, uh, looks at, and it looks terrible. The other one is gonna be bad ridge cap, which I'm not gonna go into unless you want me to. But those are two things that just look terrible, but aren't as terrible as they look. Or little lifted flashings by the side of the chimney. That's a quick fix, right? You know, I should have thought about the moss thing. I was a, a Boy Scout a very, very long time ago. And they, uh, if I remember correctly, um, if you get lost, you look for moss on the side yeah. of the tree. And that tells right. you which way north is. Yeah. Well, okay. that's it. It's not getting any sun. So it, it's more susceptible to moisture and it causes the moss to grow. But generally speaking, it's not a big issue. But make the girls aware of it when you call in and the inspector will address it. Okay. What about, um, let me see if I have anything else that I've noticed. So um, I do get buyers to do home inspections. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, roof inspections. Um, should an owner get a roof inspection before they list the house? What is your thoughts on that? It's not a bad thoughts? idea because two things will happen. Uh, one thing that'll happen is they'll go in there more prepared if they have an inspection and they'll know what they're up against uh, because there are a lot of things that freak out the buyers, the sellers, the agents, the realtors, excuse me. So it's good to have your gun loaded, so to speak. But the other thing is our inspections are so comprehensive. They can act, you know, they got photos of all of the right. up to 10 photos and all that, that uh, it, could act, it can actually be used as a marketing tool. Oh, okay, right. yeah, absolutely. So um, once a homeowner, once a buyer buys a home and now they're homeowners, yeah. um, you know, we talk about, I, I think one of, the, one of the things that homeowners say is, well, you know, my house came with a 30 year roof and I bought it when it was 10 years old. So I don't have to worry about it for 20 years. Yeah. Um, how often should they be getting homeowners? Should they be getting inspections or at least, you know, yeah. some I'm consideration? Say every, every two to three years. And our inspections are complimentary. We're not in the free inspection business, just like you're not in the free house showing business. Right. However, uh, every two, three years or so, it's not too bad. But this is the misnomer or the misunderstanding about warranties. The one I hear about tile roofs quite often is, oh, it's a lifetime roof. You know, you think it's going to last a lifetime. Well, here's, and so why do I need anything? Well, it's right. like you and I, we're a lifetime. We were made for a lifetime, but we need maintenance, number one. <laughs> and when it comes to composition, those, uh, those warranties are prorated. And that's a work, that's a material warning. That's uh, um, warranty right. that's not a workmanship warranty so it's uh i try not to be too too much information on that because i don't want to short the people out but that's the long and the short of it but that's really common for it to be a product warranty not a installation right. or service and it is pro warranted generally in, in a 20 year period uh going downhill on material only two percent a year or something like that wow okay do you have anything that you think um, our viewers should know more about in roofs? Um, like, like your, let's start with your phone number. What's your phone number? I'm going to give you my personal phone number because I like the realtors always to have my number. I say because I have the bat phone. So my personal, <laughs> my personal number, I'm the regional supervisor, is 209-324-8888. 209 But you can call into the office at 1-800-913-1180, 1-800-913-1180, book an inspection. The inspections, I said, are complimentary, uh, but we just, you know, we can run into th some things of people using us just to get a, uh, uh, what do you got, you know, a uh, uh, credit. So we, like I say, we're not in the free inspection business, we're in the complimentary business, just like you're not in the free roof showing business. So that's something, we'll turn it around in 24 to 48 hours. And as I said, you always have access to me. We've been doing it a long time. Also, the, uh, the inspector's phone number will be at the top of that inspection. So they can always oh, call. Oh, good, the, yeah. Yeah, they can always call the inspector for if they have any questions. 
there's a lot of things, but um, I think those are the primary issues here uh, for now anyway. And uh, give us a try if you haven't used us before. We're in a lot of regions. We uh, did in the first quarter, for example, I was talking to the operations manager. We did 6,100 inspections in the first quarter because we we're like you. We have a digital model and we're paperless. So uh, we're able to have a very efficient, not a perfect, but a very efficient model. What, how far south do you go and how far north and east and west from Sacramento? We're doing the East Bay, North Bay. We don't do San Jose anymore. We used to, we pulled out of there. I won't go into why. And we'll come as far as snow, basically. For the East, North, I'm gonna say we like to stay uh, Rockland-ish, but we'll go further. So you might wanna ask the girls. And we're now as far as Kings and Tulare County. Wow. A lot of business in Fresno, uh, but Sacramento is our home base and we do a lot of business in Sacramento. Does that help? Yeah, absolutely, thank you. Uh, well, thanks again for joining, joining me um, on this uh, Zoom meeting and discussing uh, roofing. I always learn something new uh, from you. Um, today, in addition to the fishing and hunting, uh, we got some information about uh, moss on a roof. Um, things to look for if you're a homeowner. And uh, if you're a homeowner watching this, go ahead and contact Robin and set up a, a, a time for him to take a look at your house if you have concerns. Yeah. Now we'll send out one of our 12 inspectors. I no longer get on roofs, but realize too that you can sign through um, DocuSign, actually the other version of DocuSign, or you can order your inspections online at roofdoctors.com, www.roofdoctors.com. And we're always available. We've got a full-time staff in there to answer any questions and help you with that sort of thing. Uh, what a privilege, by the way. And so I want to say welcome to the folks over there at Fathom. Thank I you. am privileged to, uh, to do this. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll talk to you again. Broken I hope out. so, Ray. I'll see you soon.